In this video, we're going to be creating a lot of the classes and the different blueprint types that we need to actually get the project running. So this is going to, again, not really have anything happening by the end of this, but we're going to have everything ready for the future to quickly plug things in and actually set up the main bulk of the logic. So one of the things that I wanted to avoid and make a point of in this playlist is that we won't be using casts between classes very often, uh, if at all, mainly because it can be a very expensive call to make, uh, but on top of that, there's a lot that needs to be loaded into memory whenever you're casting to a class, especially if that class is then casting to something else. Uh, all of those different classes need to be called into memory just for that. So we're gonna make heavily use of interfaces here. So the first thing I want to do is go to our blueprints folder and we're gonna create a new folder called interfaces. Now we only have a few actual classes in this project. So the two interface classes that we need are gonna be one for the game state and one for the player. So I'm gonna create two interface classes. And if you're unfamiliar, you can get two interfaces by right clicking, going to blueprints on the drop down, finding blueprint interface. So I'm gonna create two interface classes, one called BPI underscore game state and one called BPI underscore player. Okay, so we'll come back to these a little bit later. But basically, if you're not familiar with interfaces, you create functions in here, you place an interface on the class that you want that function to be referenced. And that way, any other class can do a check to see if the interface is there, or you can just blindly call it quite safely. And it avoids needing that cast because you're just going to assume that the interface is on the class. If it is, then it will get called uh, and you run everything pretty much as standard from that point in the class. So they're actually really easy to use. They can be very convenient and make uh, the game setup just a little bit more flexible than constantly ca uh, casting between classes. But we're gonna come back here a bit later to fill those functions in. Uh, the other thing that I know that we need, we're gonna go back to the blueprints folder. We need our actual game state. So this is going to be a base class. So we're gonna to go to blueprints and we'll find the game state. We want the game state base and we're just going to create this and call it BP underscore game state. Uh, now, because we have a few different things all kind of relating to the game setup, uh, I'm gonna put this in its own folder again, just to keep things tidy. So I'll create a new folder called game and I'll just place the two game modes and the game state in here. So the game state's gonna be used in all of the different levels that we have. So again, I've already created for us a menu level and a main level. So what I want to do is I'm gonna go into the blueprints that we already have. I'm gonna go into the game mode base, first of all, and just double check that in here we have the game state class set to be BP underscore game state, because this is where we're gonna be doing all of the loading and the saving. We want to make sure that we have access to those functions, regardless of the level or the game mode that we're using. So again, I'm gonna go into the game mode menu and just override the game state to use the one that we've just created as well. And then the two final things we want to create are going to be an enum and a struct. So we're gonna try and make this as dynamic as possible as well. Um, and setting it up this way means that we don't need to hard code things in the different blueprints or get references from things like a uh, inventory manager we can create some data classes which will hold this for us and then we can just reference them depending on the type of headpiece we're looking at. So if we go to blueprints, we will first create our enumeration and we'll call this one E headpieces. And whilst we're creating things, we'll just create our structure. So again, go to blueprints and structure and we'll call this one S headpiece cost. Okay, so the E headpieces is going to be our enum which will hold all of the possible headpieces that we can wear in the game. So this is something you will have to change manually at some point, so it's not 100% dynamic, but this is going to reflect the three meshes that we have and also the fourth unequipped state that the player can have as well, so just none. So we're gonna have hair one, two, and hat. And then of course, in your game, if you're adding any extra, if you've got other meshes or hats that you want to add, then you can just add extra enum values. Uh, and again, that will make it slightly more dynamic in the blueprints, which, which will reference that. Uh, because you can just update the enum and then all of the classes will know what new uh, options are available. So this is quite simple. In the E headpieces, what we want to do is create four new slots just by hitting new four times. Uh, and we're just gonna name them. So like I've said, we're gonna have none or unequipped. We're gonna have hair one, hair two, and then hat. And this is what I mean. If you had things like a baseball cap or a bowler cap or something, you could add two new slots and create a baseball and a bowler or something. And you would then have, when we use these enums in the classes later, it, they would know about those new hat types as well. So we can save that. 
and then to link with this, when we want to find the hat, which is currently displayed when we're toggling through, we also want to find the cost of the headpiece. So this is where the structure comes in. We're going to change the first value here from a Boolean to an integer. And we'll call the first one, which is uh, pre-created for us, we'll just call this none. And then again, we're going to create three more variables after this which will now by default be integers because we changed that a moment ago. And again, we're gonna call this hair one, hair two, and hat. Okay, and we can see down here, we have the option now for default values. So this is really handy. Again, we can set the price once here and depending on what is being displayed in the menu, we can query which headpiece is being looked at. So if we're looking at uh, hair one, we can then find out for hair one, how much does hair one cost in this structure? So I'm going to just set this uh, by a 100 point incremental. It doesn't really matter. You can set this to be what you want. So I'm going to have hair one is 100, uh, two is 200 and hat as 300. And of course, leaving none as zero because we always want to be able to uh, equip nothing at all. And we don't want that to have a monetary value to it. I guess that's the sort of thing that only EA would do. So we will leave that as none. And then we will close those tabs because we're done with those now. And that is really the data setup ready for the game. And the other important thing that we're going to need to actually store the data will be our save file. So this is the final thing we'll create today. We're going to go into blueprints once more. So create a blueprint class and we'll go and look down here for a save class. So this is something default already created by Epic. And this is using the standard Unreal save load system. So we'll create one of these. And we'll just call this one bp underscore save. Again, though, for the save file, we don't need to actually fill anything in here. We will leave that for its own topic in its own video. Likewise, with the interfaces, it's good to have them ready, but I think they're going to make a lot more sense in context of when we actually use them and start filling them out. But with all of this done, it puts us in a great point to start with the game state where we can start doing the saving and the loading, and then we can link that into the menu that we have. I'll leave that video here for now though. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, if you want to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing and make sure you hit the notification bell so you actually get those updates. Um, and I will be hopefully releasing a lot more on the channel over the coming weeks, covering a lot of different types of content, including some 3D work and uh, game mechanic specific videos covering mechanics from existing game series. So it's definitely worth getting those notifications in case any of that might be of interest. As always though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.